Hi guys, welcome back. Now, we're going to show you how to install a new fork. Um, now, tools you're going to need first. Tape measure. You're going to need the tape measure. You're going to need some kind of cutting device for the steerer tube. Now, I use a pipe cutter. You can use a hacksaw if you're uh, competent enough with one. A star nut setting tool. Okay. You'll need the star nut itself. Put it into the steerer. A pen to mark out the length of the steerer, an allen key to remove the old fork or install the new fork, a hammer and a, a steering race, bearing race setting tool. Now, okay so if you are swapping one fork from another and you're going to use the same headset, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the crown race, the bearing race here. So there are two ways there are two ways of actually doing this now. So um, you can get a nice big fancy tool like this. Not everybody's gonna have one of those for every now and then, but uh, we have one here in the workshop, obviously. Or you can use a screwdriver, okay? Don't really recommend doing this, but if you have no other choice, then look, what can you do? On the fork, I've started this already, just but it gives you an idea. On the back of the fork, there's a recess, okay? You should see that recess there. What you can do is you can put the fork upright, get your screwdriver, you push that underneath, and you can lift very, very slightly, okay? And it will move, okay? Now, very gently, you can put a cloth under there if you want to save any marks. You can lift a little bit more. And I'm doing this on one of my good forks, just to show you that you can do it without causing any problems. A little bit more around, can keep going around, bring it back around to the side, start again from here, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and just keep working your way around until you have the thing off. Now you can twist it that way as well if it needs to be. Now sometimes you might need a slightly bigger screwdriver, something like that one maybe, a little thicker, and just gives it underneath again. It just pushes a little bit there. Now, I'm going to show you the problems with doing this, and I've actually done this on purpose just so you can see the issues it can cause, okay? So there you go, there's the, the ring off. Just grab a cloth there, one second. Wipe around. You can see got my wires there. Little marks are on the edge. That's from prying with the screwdriver. Now you could put a little bit of plastic underneath this to do that, but I just wanted to show you that so you could see what damage you can do if you don't use the proper tool. But like I say, I wouldn't recommend doing it that way, but if you have no other choice, so be it. Once you have the crown race off, the next thing to do then is measure the steerer and cut the steerer, okay? So, if this is a new build, it's a new frame, a new fork, you're going to want to put the crown race on first and the bearing into the frame. Put the frame, uh, the fork into the frame and measure how much above the frame you think you're going to need, okay? Remember, you've got to put shims and you've got your stem to go on there, so you need to put those into place and then mark it off and then cut, okay? So, but you... Once you mark from the top level, you need to go down a few mil to make sure the compression cap will pull it all into place. If you're just replacing a fork like this one, then you can just measure the steerer that's already on and come out to the bike. Now, mine is 180, and I know that because I usually run most of my fork uh, steers that are in 180 because the head tube is usually about the same, but some are going to be different, okay? So you could be 190, 200, even down to 160, depending if it's a small frame or a big frame. So, um, so first thing I'm going to do then is take my 180, transfer it across. Now, this is where your pen comes in handy, or even a scribe of some sort, some kind of a scribe, and mark it off at 180. like that or you can take a pick something like this and you can actually mark the steerer there at 180. Now once you've marked it look back double check triple check to make sure you have it right 
the last thing you want to do is get it wrong and make a, a complete boo-boo of the steerer, okay? So, steerer marked, double checked, triple checked, make sure you have it right. Like I said, don't make a mistake of cutting it to the wrong size because you can't go back. Long maybe, yeah, but once it's shortened, you can't add it back on. This is when I take the pipe cutter, which is a really easy piece of kit to use. Now, I'm going to adjust this out to go around the steerer, tighten it up a little bit so we get to the point that I want it to be. Sometimes it's easier to put it down to get the first line. And do a gentle mark around first. Okay, just gently score it first. See that there? So you do your first gentle line, and then you can see your line there ready to cut. So then you just put a bit of tension onto it and start cutting. I find these much better than hacksaws because they're a lot straighter. And neater. Now these things also have a little deburr tool, which is really very handy. You can just screw that around the inside, takes up any rough edges, and then yeah, you can feel there. There's not even a lip on that, which is what you get with a lot of uh, hacksaws. You get a lot of burn and roughness. Done. So next thing we want to do then is take the star nut and we need to insert the star nut into the top of the fork, okay? Now, these are invaluable. They're not expensive. Um, if you don't want to buy one, you can use a bolt and uh, hit it in, but it never goes in straight. These are absolutely perfect. You literally screw on the star nut onto the end of the tool. That slides inside, like so. And this piece then fits over the top of the steerer and leaves its perfect fit. So then what you need to do then is just get the hammer, as we discussed earlier on, and give it a, a few knocks. And you hear the tone change there. Slide that off, unscrew that. And there's your perfectly fitted star nut or star fangled nut, as some people call them. Okay. Next step is to put the crown race back on. Okay, now you can tap these down very, very gently with a edge of a screwdriver if you don't have anything proper to fit them on. It's not advised because it can cause a bit of damage, um, but look, if, you, if you're really stuck, I suppose go ahead. I, of course, have one of these guys. This is a proper race installing tool, so um, I'll show you how this works. So you slide the race over onto the fork, as you can see, it's a little tight fit in there, so it, this is how it stays in place, because you have to tap it on. This goes over the top, as such, and then again, you just tap, and you hear the tone change. That no, You know then, actually have it on in place. So you can take a look there and see it's all flush and in place. All right. And there you go, done. If you took a fork off the bike before, so uh, refitting is just in reverse. So straightforward, simple enough. You know your stack height, that you have your handlebars and everything else. Um, if you're fitting new, then it's fairly straightforward as you would have already mock fitted uh, so you actually get the steerer height. Now when it comes to fitting the fork into the frame, I'm going to pre-grease the bearing race holders, or the bearing holders, just to save any creaking. The same along the 
crown race. A little grease around there, okay. Take your bearings, install the one and a half bearing to the bottom first. Slide the fork up. Take your top bearing and your top cap. Slide into place. I run one spacer under the stem and one above, just so I have a little bit of adjustment if I need it. So put the one spacer on. Stem on. Spacer on. Start on it. Bolt in. There you have it it's installed and of course you're going to put your wheel on and straighten your wheel out uh, your handlebars out your wheel after that so um, that's fairly straightforward so there you go how to uh, cut and install a fork